So this is super important for you as an insurance agent. And it really depends on what kind of business you're running, but as an insurance agent, you want people to see your about the first step that I think you should take in order to start really up in your Instagram game. Okay, so let's head over to Instagram. And so I already have an account, so we're not really, I'm not gonna sign up, go through the sign up process with you, but it's super easy if you don't already have one. So as you're looking, you have a profile picture up at the top left. You can see how many posts they have, how many followers, how many people I'm following. You can see where you can edit your profile. Okay, so I have my name, Kelsey Anderson. So you'll want to create a business account. This is just so you get a little bit more features than the regular one does. And honestly, I guess I'm not even sure what it looks like anymore without it being a business account because I've had it there so long. So I'm, I call mine a personal blog because mine, I'm travel. And so under my name, you'll see personal blog and then you'll see just, this is kind of just what I have as my like profile description. So I have little quote in there I have I describe myself as a traveler an entrepreneur a journaler and then I live in Nebraska USA and you can see here that I had a link to demotascarves.com which was a scarf business that I had and I don't have that anymore so I probably should take that down I can do that really quick to see how easy it is to just delete things so since I deleted that you can see now I don't have a link in the bio um, we're gonna talk about this a little bit later but I just kind of want to show you and just get you familiar with all the different things that come along with Instagram so as you can see there's um, here are where my stories are at. So if you click into these, you can see everything that I've posted that's not an actual picture on your feed. So this is just stuff that it's just like a quick like Snapchat if you are familiar with that. So as you can see, here's all the food I've had. I tagged in this location, which is not even existent anymore because they closed it. Um, but you can see all the different places that I went. Just a really just a nice look into my day to day life and I guess what I'm eating more like. Um, and then you can see here all of the pictures that I posted. So it's pretty clear that my profile is travel. Um, I'm posting, you know, here's me on top of a mountain, me skiing. Um, I went to Thailand, so I have this picture of me in this sweet pool um, in Bangkok. Just tons of pictures of all about travel. So you can tell going to my profile that it's about travel okay and I also wanted to point out my profile picture so my profile picture is a, me a close up picture of me so this is super important for you as an insurance agent and it really depends on what kind of business you're running but as an insurance agent you want people to see your face um, in my opinion and I know it's other people's opinions as well but you can make so much more of a connection when you can actually see the face and people can see my face here in the screen they feel like they know me a lot better. I don't know, that's just the way it goes. But um, I would try and find a nice professional picture. You can see mine's not very professional, but at least, I don't know, I like the way I look in it. My hair is a lot longer because I just, and I just cut it off, but um, I just feel like I'm able to make a connection way better with somebody that I can actually see their face in the profile picture. Okay, so now you kind of know all the different things that go along, just a, just a very quick glance at Instagram. Definitely find a good profile picture, number one. Get a good bio describing who you are. Definitely put that your expense, final expense insurance agent in there and you'll want to maybe put your location, kind of like how I did. I just put a little pin with Nebraska USA and then you'll want to put the link in the bio. So this could be if you have a website, go ahead and put that in there, that's great. Um, you could use your Facebook profile or your Facebook um, page. You can find the link by just going to the URL when you're at your Facebook page, just copy and paste that link right into there. So that way people can literally click on that link because this is the only clickable link that you have on your profile page. You can't post it in your captions and have people click on that. So you'll wanna have the page that you wanna direct your traffic to if they were just curious to know a little bit more about, about your business. So here, that's where they click and that's where they can be directed to your page and then have, you know, they are looking at your business, which is super cool. Okay, so let's move on to the second, I guess, so I had, okay, so research is next. So you'll wanna do just a little bit of research. It's not super, you don't need to go really in depth heavy on it because for you as an insurance agent, you're just competing against other local people. So this is, a, these are the type of people that you wanna start searching for. So um, if I were, I'll do, I'm gonna talk about travel, but you put it in your own terms. So for me, maybe 
I don't know, maybe I'd want to do travel Nebraska and see if that's even okay. So that, I guess that's, that is one. So I would want to go and look at all these people's pictures. So you'll see their profile up here. So in search of quirk, I could follow him there if I wanted to. But you'll see all the different people. So Ken Smith photographs. So these are all pictures and it looks like they were taken in Nebraska or people that were traveling to or in Nebraska. So I maybe want to go through Midwest bloggers. So that might be a good one, except I'm not really Midwest. I would consider myself, I kind of travel all over. But I maybe want to go look at her profile and just see like what she's doing, where she's like seeing success at, where, like how people are responding to what she's posting. So she has some nice um, stories, it right? looks very organized, looks like she's an Illinois, okay, so Nebraska blogger, Illinois blogger, Wisconsin, so looks like she is going around and she's calling herself a blogger in all these different states, which is super cool. Okay, so you see her link in the bio, that's cool. Um, so she joined chat, you can chat with her, but that's the way she chose for people to reach her otherwise, like other than her Instagram, which is cool. So Midwest lifestyle, fashion influencer, mom, beauty, travel bloggers. So. She just describes exactly who she is and what she wants people to know about her right, you know, right from looking at her profile. So that's pretty cool. So let's see where she's getting. So here's what I would look at. So the, here's this Midwest Blogger loop. So she posted this picture. It looks like she maybe designed it on Canva or something. She didn't receive as much likes and response as she received on this picture. And this picture is a close-up picture of her. And you can see she got 71 likes of a close-up picture of her and she looks like she's she's in Georgia okay cool but this one didn't receive as much engagement and that's maybe because it wasn't a picture of her I don't know but this is kind of stuff that you need to go and just start determining like how you're gonna use it on your own profile so here's her in this cute little dress um, she got 88 likes a little bit more than this one so um, maybe people like the fashion part of it um, you'll just need to start going through and just seeing what you think that you could transfer over to your Instagram and see success with and get people to engage with. Okay, so let's next talk about what we want to include in our posts and like what makes a good post, what are the key things to consider. So first I would say is to make sure your picture is pretty quality. No, I'm not talking about going out and finding your own photographer to take your pictures for you, but just, I mean, with iPhones now, the camera quality is so high that you don't, you don't need to be doing that. See this picture right here, I took with my phone so you can get a pretty good quality picture a good looking picture without having a high quality camera okay so pieces of the post so here is my caption so a caption is important and I'm not going to tell you to use as in-depth of a caption as I used here I kind of like to journal and blog so that's why I did that but you do want to include a call to action. So what do I mean by call to action? I mean that you want to put something at the end of whatever you say. So let's just see. Let's see if I can find one really quick that, or I'll just use an example. So maybe here in my post, so I didn't, I didn't do this, but you know, I'll post about this great time I had in Thailand. I loved the elephants. I loved how bristly their hair felt. Um, comment below if you've ever touched an elephant and felt the bristly hair. So that's super silly and super simple, but you want to make people comment below. So you want to make people comment below because you want people to engage with. So you can see all these people. So my friend Lindsay, she comments, I want an elephant. And then I can comment, I comment back and I say, we should totally get one. You want people to engage with you so you can comment back and engage with them. You want to build this relationship. You want, you want to tell people to comment below so they feel like they need to comment below and respond to what you're saying or maybe you ask a question maybe you post a quote and you say like what do you what are your thoughts on this comment below what you think or you know comment below another tip that you have just it literally can be anything just put a call to action sometimes you'll see people respond sometimes you won't but the more consistent you are the more people will expect it and the more people will look forward to commenting and interacting with you okay so next is a location. So here I am at the Elephant Jungle Sanctuary in Chiang Mai, Thailand. And so I put that as my location. You can see. So I'm just going to go in and edit this. So I guess I can't edit the picture. You can't see that. But you can see at the top right here that I can either remove my location or I can change it. So if I were to change this location, I would just type in whatever. So I could even I could literally change it to Omaha, Nebraska. But what you want to do, the purpose of this is that you can literally find people you can search by location. So you want, so here's places. 
So if I were to do Omaha, Nebraska, go in here, I can click on Omaha, Nebraska, and I can see all the people that posted and had location as Omaha, Nebraska. So this would be even a great place for you to look for potential clients. Um, you could see at least just who's you know active on Instagram. Maybe maybe you type in. I don't know, here's the Henley Dorley Zoo. You can see literally where people are at. Okay, yeah, so location, super cool. So next, I wanna talk about within your posts and what you should consider on your posts are hashtags. So, people go back and forth on this a lot. And there's a lot of research that I'm just not aware of. The Insta Instagram algorithm is super complicated and they're always changing. But what I'm gonna tell you is that there's a couple ways you can do it. So here you can see I did hashtag Bangkok. I included some hashtags within the actual caption. So what I've been doing lately, and what I think works the best, is just posting. So here's my post, you saw, and then I post the hashtags in the first comment. So sometimes when you post them in your caption, it takes away from the caption and people get annoyed and it looks spammy and weird. So what you wanna do is you just, after you submit your post, you wanna go back to your post and you wanna click the comment button and you wanna comment yourself, all those hashtags. What I do is I keep all my hashtags in a note, and so I can copy and paste it super quick. You're not constantly having to type, ha you know, get the hashtag and then find a hashtag. You can literally just copy and paste it, super simple. Okay, another thing I wanted to mention was Canva. So if you're a tech person that maybe wants to throw in a couple quotes here and there, great. So I would recommend using Canva, it's free. And what you can do is you can literally just create, I guess, just kidding, I need to get into my app. Okay, so if I go into my Canva app, I can just show you really quick about a couple things that you could do. Um, so like I said, maybe if you wanna make a quote, so you can see a bunch of the quotes that I've kind of put together. So what you do is you can just create a design and if, if you're in your app, you just go to these three little dots up at the top and you can create a custom size design. So it's, so Canva will give you like a, a template. You can even see down here, it says Instagram post. Um, just all these right here. You can click on that and it'll give you dimensions that fit perfectly for Instagram, but what I do is I make a custom size one, and I use 864 by 1080 pixels for my picture size. And the great thing about this is that it takes up more room when somebody's scrolling through. So my picture just pops out 10 times more than others who use that Instagram because it's a smaller square. So if you're using, it's, it's fine if you use the template that they suggest, but again, the reason why I use a bigger one is because it just takes up more room on somebody's screen, so they notice it a lot more. Okay, so you can do a lot of things. I can change the background, I can add text. Um, I'm just gonna put in something super silly and just to show you what all you can do. So you can do just tons of stuff on here. And like I said, it's free. So you can change the color to whatever you want. You can add backgrounds, you can add images. But the great thing about Canva is that you can custom size your design and I love that because again, it takes up more on somebody's feed and just makes my picture more known. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is consistency. So you wanna be really consistent in the beginning. I would say, if you're feeling it, post every day for a while, just until you build a bigger following. So right now I'm trying to grow an account and I've been posting every single day and trying to just give it my all in the beginning. That way, once you get your following, you can kind of, you know, you can go back down to two to three times a week. It's up to you, but when I'm traveling, I my followers are used to seeing a post from me every single day. I update them every single day with the main thing that I did and just a small little blog post. It's kind of up to you on what you wanna do, but just find what works for your followers. If you start posting a lot and the engagement starts to go down, then I would maybe suggest not posting as much. It just kind of depends on your following and when they engage with you the most. Okay, and that kind of brings me into the next, about when your followers are most responsive and active. So I usually post around four to five every day. If I'm, if I'm going to post, it's around four to five. Maybe six, it kind of depends. But for my followers, most of them live in Nebraska, so they're in the same time zone as I am. And four to five, you know, that's when they're getting off to work, maybe when they're just getting on their phones, catching up from, you know, the day that they missed. Uh, but that's when I see the most success with my posts and the most likes and comments, responses. Uh, so that's when I decided to post. Um, so up to you. That just kind of takes a lot of trial and error, trying different times. Instagram will tell you and give you some insight onto when if you go... Let's see, I actually forgot kind of how to do this. Here we go, so you can go to your insights right there. 
and I can go back and do that again for you. So these top three lines right here, go to insights, and I can see what days it is best for me to post. So Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday are the best days for me to post. And you can see two, yeah, so my discovery, so Sunday, that's how many accounts I reached in comparison to when I posted on these days. So it'll tell you how many website clicks you get, how many profile visits. Insights can give you, they give you a lot of good information. You can also just see too, so here's all my stories. Here's how many people saw my stories. This is the amount of people that looked at the stories that I posted on Instagram. So that's super cool. And you can see your audience too. You can see top locations, where your um, audience is coming from. So most of mine are in Lincoln. Um, you can see the age range, so 18 to 24 is most of my audience. You can see your gender and the, the followers at what times they're most active during the day. So this would be a great place to look, but you should also be careful because Instagram can only work with the data that you give them. So if you're not posting at these times, obviously it's not going to show you a good engagement rate because you're not posting and you have nothing for them to engage with. So testing, testing, testing will help you find your best time to post. And it's really not that important. You just want to kind of start getting content out there and just creating actionable, like I said, call to action posts. Um, so I talked a little bit about it, but Instagram lives and stories, this is completely up to you. Um, if it's out of your comfort zone, that's fine. Maybe just start posting here and there. But as you can see, here's my story. So I posted this picture this morning of my dog. He had this cute little wrinkle on his head and I just showed my Instagram followers how cute it was and how I loved it. Um, cool thing about this is that, so the other day I decided to cut my hair, but before that I decided to ask for a poll on Instagram. So let's just see, so if I were to do, right here. So you can go in right here and you can click on this poll. And so I could ask like, do you like my haircut? So people can either click yes or no and you can see how many responses you get on this. So these are just really fun and it's, for, even for me, when I'm just scrolling through people's Instagram stories, like it's just so easy to just click and you wanna see too what people are guessing themselves. So if I click yes, when I hit yes, then it'll tell me how many people voted saying yes, so it'll give you percentage wise. So it's just kind of fun to see, it's fun to interact with, but then you get people engaging with your content. They're not just looking, like when they're scrolling through, they'll see this and they'll stop and they'll vote and you that's what you want people to do. So that's just a cool feature, one of my favorite features to use. Um, okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is Instagram direct messages. So as you can see here, I'm under, I'm in my messages right now and these are people that are replying to my Instagram stories, maybe they're just DMing, DMing me after they saw one of my posts, but here you can see, so reply to my story. So I posted this story about how I can't believe I just cut my hair. My friend Shauna commented and said, very, very cute. So from here, all she had to do was, you barely just swipe up, I can't, let's see if I can show you what it would look like. Let's just go, okay, we're gonna go to this. So I can send a message right here. So Team TBN, this amazing dog walking company in New York. So if I were to want to send a, a message and just say, oh my gosh, I love you guys. I could send a message right here. I could click send a message and I could type, oh, I could even type in a quick reaction. That way, I mean, it's super quick. I could literally just press that little heart face and it would send off and they would get that and they would know that I interacted with their posts. Super, super cool. Okay, so even though I'm talking a little bit more on a personal level, I have a lot of good business conversations in here too because people will see me, you know, maybe I post a picture of me at a coffee shop working and they'll ask, oh my gosh, what do you even do? Like, how are you at a coffee shop right now and not in an office? It just creates conversation and that conversation is so valuable because you're creating such a deeper connection with these people and that's just what you want, right? So use Instagram direct messages. They're super, super important and they will reward you. Okay, and the last thing, this just goes along with everything I've been saying, it's just to be social. That's what social media is for. That's why it's there, is to just be social with people. So engage, be a part of your community, provide them value, and just give and don't expect to receive. You don't want to go out there and start spamming people's accounts and just being really aggressive and, you know, um, commenting on people's pictures and saying like, hey, we should talk about, you know, insurance or you should buy insurance from me. Just comment and say, like, if I were to just go, I'm scrolling through, like, super cute picture, I don't know, like, oh my gosh, your dog is so adorable, like, just, and don't be, like, super aggressive and creepy, but you know what I mean, just 
Engaging with others is gonna make them want to engage and give back to you as well, but don't expect it. Just give and just give a lot of good feedback, value, whatever you gotta do. Um, all right guys, so that concludes the video. I hope you liked it, and if you did, please help me out and click the like button wherever it's at, I'm not sure. You can subscribe too if you really want to, if you enjoyed it that much. We will be posting a lot of new content, and actually like every day for the next eight days, I think, in a row. So I would definitely hop on the train. Also, join our Facebook group. I'll post a link in the description that you can click on and head over. There you can get so much help. You can also comment below because I also want to help you there. But please head over. If you're a final expense insurance agent, head over to the Facebook group, join, and just join our family because there's a lot of good content going in on there. A lot of good questions being answered and we're providing a lot of value. So I would love to see you over there. All right, see ya.